Okay, good morning. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy well, New I'm, Year. I want to do something a little different now with our classes. Mm -hmm. Every month, I'm going to teach you a greeting in a different language. Hey, and you will no. learn a response as well. So for today, we're going to be learning Spanish, which is kind of like a second language to um, English. So good morning is buenos dias. Can everybody say buenos dias? Buenos, buenos dias. Okay, and then I will say como esta, which means how are you? And then your return to me response will be me siento bien consinera. Can we try that? Yes. Siento bien consinera. Consinera. Now, consinera. Now, what this whole phrase means is I feel good, chef, which is hopefully a positive aspect we can have on life every day. So it'll go like this Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Correct. And then I will say, como esta? And you will say, me siento bien. Me siento bien. Cocinera. Cocinera. Now, as we do it for the whole month, you'll get used to it. And you'll learn a little something extra along with the cooking that we're going to do. So let's try it one more time. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Como esta? Como esta? Como esta? No, you don't say that. I'm asking you, how are you? Como esta is what I'm asking you. Your answer is, me siento bien cocinera. <laughs> me siento bien cocinera. Now, y'all can take the time to write that down because we're going to be doing this every day. So... Greetings again. I am Chef Destiny. I am Chef Aja. And we are coming to you live from Cooking and Learning with Care segment for Fulton County Government. Oh, I am so excited to be back with you all today. Um, I know it's been a long time. It's been agonizing two, three weeks without y'all, but we got a lot of good new class material. A lot of different things that we're going to be doing. I'm adding some extra classes as well. We'll let you know about that. We got a whole lot of good surprises and guests for y'all this year. So I hope that you stay tuned and include everyone else. As we do it always, we're going to let Chef Aja go first. And then I'll go. And Tuesdays from now on, which is also new, will be Copycat Tuesdays. Everybody say Copycat Tuesday. Copycat Tuesday. So what that means is we will be doing a copycat recipe from a restaurant, or you can even send me your recipe, and I'll say it's the Grandma Betty's copycat recipe. Um, <laughs> to that. Um, today, I will be doing a Outback coconut shrimp copycat recipe with, of course, my own little twist on it. I also will be adding to that a cranberry crunch broccoli slaw. You know, we're trying to eat a little healthier this year. Y'all know I've been on a health journey, so we're going to incorporate more green, more vegetable good. recipes into this year. Still going to do good savory stuff because I still love savory food and sweet stuff as well. Y'all know that's my specialty. Mm -hmm. um, and I will also be doing copycat Almond Joy bars, but instead of bars, I'm going to be making truffles. Now we're going. I'm going to spotlight Aja, and she can tell y'all what she's going to be doing. All right. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year again. Can everybody just to get the logistics? Everybody can see the pan. Okay. Yes. Today I'm going to be doing Red Lobsters copycat crab Alfredo. Now, my twist on it is I'm adding shrimp. Also, another twist is I'm going to be using the imitation crab meat product that uh, Chef Destiny and I have talked about 
I'm using this for, it's more economical because we do have a budget for these videos. However, if you want to use what they use, which is king crab meat or real crab meat, please feel free to do that. I'm keeping my crab kind of whole. So it's kind of thick, giving you the illusion of crab, okay? So that is the difference that I'm going to do. Here I have a pan that is getting, that has been getting hot. In this pan, I have butter and some oil. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pan sear my shrimp. They are already pre-seasoned. I use a little Old Bay, a little onion powder, a little garlic powder. And I'm just doing this to provide a texture for, a, for my shrimp, a little, a little bite, if you will, okay? Now these shrimps do not take long to cook, as with most seafood, and I am going to only cook these shrimp halfway because I'm going to finish cooking these shrimp with the Alfredo sauce that I'm going to make. So you want it to get a nice pink color. We know that when shrimp turns pink and when it starts to curl, that it is done. We also know seafood in general does not take long to cook. So after we flip these shrimp over, remember I'm not cooking them all the way through. I'm gonna put them on a pan, a plate. I'm going to use the same pan and I'm going to cook. Well, my crab meat is already cooked, so I'm going to warm it through, okay? Now at this point, since we know the crab meat is already cooked, we're just gonna set this shrimp and crab to the side, okay? Now, in my next pan, I have some butter and I have some olive oil. I also have some fresh garlic and some green onions. The green onions is for flavor and color. You can use any type of onion you like. I wanted to use, like I said, the green to give it a pop of color. So I'm starting off with maybe two tablespoons of butter and oil and we're gonna to make a light roux because we just need this sauce to have some body and some thickness. Now you can use a store-bought Alfredo sauce. However, once you see how simple homemade Alfredo sauce is, you probably won't want to use the store-bought anymore. So to this butter, garlic, green onion mixture, I'm going to put in some flour. flour. You know you want to get with any roux, you want to get the bits of flour out of there. You want to cook the flour for at least a minute because no one likes a pasty sauce. Turn my heat up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to slightly add a little bit of salt and instead of black pepper, I'm going to add a little crushed red pepper. But if you don't want to add the crushed red pepper, of course, please feel free to use the black pepper. All right. Now to this, I'm going to add some heavy whipping cream. You can use milk. You can use half and half. Um, or you can use, like I'm using, heavy whipping cream. And you want to stir. as you pour the whipping cream in. I'm gonna turn my um, heat down a little because I don't want that milk or heavy cream or half and half, whatever you're using to burn or to scald. And now I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese. You can use any type of Parmesan cheese that you use. I'm using a shredded um, pack of Parmesan cheese. I like mine's cheesy, so I'm adding all of the cheese. And we're going to stir. 
to bring it up a little bit. I also have some shredded mozzarella cheese that I'm just gonna use to add to it. You can omit that, that is up to you. I'm adding it since I have it on hand, but preferably you want to definitely use the Parmesan cheese. Let's put a little bit more mozzarella in there because I like it cheesy. All righty. You can see it's slightly starting to catch a little simmer. And it's also starting to thicken as well. Now you can use whatever seasonings at this point you want to use because it's a seafood dish. I'm going to add a little bit of Old Bay. That's up to you whether you like it or not. Remember our crab and our shrimp both have seasonings on them as well. But you do not have to use Old Bay. You can use, like I said, any seasoning that you like. But do you see that the sauce is starting to get thick, the Alfredo sauce? Yes. All right. So this is how quickly it takes to make a homemade Alfredo sauce. And you're controlling the ingredients. You're controlling the salt. You're controlling everything. So, you know, it'll be good maybe to make this in some batches. Um, you don't have to do crab and shrimp. Maybe you can use it over a baked potato, whatever, whatever you like to do. Now, once my sauce has gotten nice and creamy, I'm going to add my imitation crab to that sauce. And I'm going to add my shrimp. Let that cook a little bit for a minute or two, because remember our shrimp weren't cooked all the way through. I'm gonna add a little parsley for color. Now I already have boiled um, some fettuccine pasta. You can use linguine pasta. If you only have spaghetti noodles, that's fine. But for Alfredo sauces, a nice thicker noodle works best. It um, holds the sauce better. So this is my already cooked Alfredo, I mean, excuse me, fettuccine noodles, two al dente, excuse it for clumping together. That's how pasta is sometimes. And I'm going to put that into my sauce. Now the Italians, they really believe that you should finish off your pasta in the sauce because it gives that extra flavor. But if you don't want to add your pasta to your sauce, let's say you want to save your sauce or something, that's understandable. Can everyone see that? Yes. Yes. All right. So it's nice and cheesy. We have crab in there. We have shrimp in there. I'm just trying to break up some of those noodles that stuck together. And that's it. This meal takes about, including the boiling of the noodles, this meal takes under 20 minutes to do. And it's a very nice meal. Like I said, this is the copycat meal to a Red Lobster's Crab Alfredo if you've ever had theirs. And I just added shrimp to mine. If you, if you don't like yours cheesy, add more noodles. I like a good cheesy Alfredo sauce. Let me plate it for you to show you how the finished product looks. All righty, so here, excuse me. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have some, add some green onions on top for color. And I like the little extra onion mouth fill. And here you have it. Easy peasy, red lobsters, mm -hmm. crab alfredo. Mm -hmm. I added shrimp and it's very simple to make. And it's very cost effective if you choose to use the imitation crab. Any questions about this dish? Yes, the cheese, you just use a measurement of cheese to your liking. It's yes, I, I use a measurement of cheese to my liking. I used about um, 16 ounces or one pint of heavy whipping cream. And the amount of Parmesan that I used was a 
six ounce bag of Parmesan and about two ounces of mozzarella cheese. So um, that was a half and half portion, make half of the cheese to the amount of whipping cream. But you see how nice and cheesy it is. Yes. Okay. And that sauce is nice and thick. If y'all can see it. Yeah, can see it. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that recipe and I'll give it to Chef Destiny. All right, y'all. So another new um treat we add into our roster and just for a little while because they might be reassigned i have my other employees shawanda and brenton and they are going to give you five culinary hot tips or hot hacks is what we're going to call a segment so i'm going to spotlight them one at a time after they're done then we'll get back to cooking and i'll show you what i've got so we're going to start with Shawanda first. You got to unmute yourself, please. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hello, I'm, I'm Chef Shawanda. I'm here to give you five food hacks that you might not have known about. The first one is to make limp celery crisp again. Um, you, can, you can also trim the top and the bottom of the celery, cut it off, the root of it, and it's still attached, and dropping it into, let me see, and drop the stalks upright into a pitcher of, or jar of ice cold water mm -hmm. to recrease. This also, this also works with asparagus, broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, and spinach. And another um, hack is for the ripe bananas, how you save your bananas longer? You can insert the banana hanger to the okay, insert the banana. Oh wait, I lost that. Oh, another hack is microwave lemons to get more juice. You can get more juice from a lemon by microwaving it on high for around twenty mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. It'll be warmer and softer then. Scrape from the fridge, make the fruit easier to squeeze. It, it's a must try if you're making lemonade. Mm. Separate the yolks and from whites. This hex is a borderline wizardry. Crack an egg into a bowl, then insert an empty water bottle above the yolk, squeeze in the yolk side of the, of, of the bottle as the mouth of the bottle make contact with the yolk, replace the pressure on the bottle. We say scope the scope the change in the air, suck in the yolk into the suck in the yolk into the leaves leaves the air. All right, thank you, Shawanda. I'm gonna switch it over to Brent now. And Brent, you could just give me three as well. Okay. Give me one second to spotlight. All right, go ahead, Brenton. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy New Year to everyone. Welcome back. We hey. hope everyone uh, made it to the New Year healthy. I hope you all's family is okay. And uh, like Chef Mo said, I just wanna give you all uh, three tips and three hacks to take with you. Uh, when dealing with a recipe, it's a lot that comes with the recipe. So you always wanna read the recipe all the way through. Mm. Uh, you don't wanna miss out on any ingredients pertaining to the recipe. Okay. Number two, Always set your timer less than the time that it says on the recipe to avoid anything overcooking or to avoid burning anything. Because we all know that burning fo that food that's burnt isn't as tasty when it's not burnt. Okay. <laughs> and the uh, the third is to always season to your taste. Uh, Chef Isaac said something about that as well. 
because we all have different taste buds. So I always season to what you want it to taste like. Thank you so much, Brenton. Did everybody get all of those tips? Yes. And hacks. Well, that is great. I hope you're enjoying the new content that we're having so far. So yes. what I'm gonna lower my camera so y'all can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> we're doing the copycat Outback Steakhouse shrimp. And if y'all have been to Outback, y'all know that they pretty pricey. You know, I only go there if somebody else paying. <laughs> <laughs> So what I got here is I got a bag, a pound of shrimp, and these are the, what they said was extra large, still with the tail on it. I lightly seasoned them just with some Chesapeake seasoning, which is the same as Old Bay. Y'all know y'all learned that last year. So what you will need for your setup, I have some Goya coconut milk, and I'm going to add um, just about a third of that to two eggs that I beat. And you can see this right here. And I added a dash of hot sauce because our sauce is going to be sweet. Now, does anybody know the order of frying? Which you should because we've done it plenty of times. So in my next bowl, I got some seasoned flour and I just added a little bit of the Chesapeake, some onion powder and garlic powder. Always wanna season your flour. In this next bowl, I have some shredded coconut. I like mine sweet, but if you are diabetic or such, you can get the unsweetened kind. And this is about a cup of coconut. I'm gonna add about a cup of the panko. You know, y'all can use use measuring cups. My hand is a measuring cup, so I don't need it all the time. And y'all see we got our chef back. <laughs> chef, what we named him last year, Chef Corona? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to mix up our coconut and panko. <laughs> so what we're going to do first, we're going to do flour then our coconut egg mixture, and then dredge it into our coconut and panko. I had my grease over here heating up um, between 325 and 350. You want a nice golden color. So we're gonna get started, flour. And y'all know my favorite saying, I know y'all ain't forgot, what is it? Clean up as you go. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you really want to get that coconut soaked in there. So it should be looking like that. I'm going to do a couple more before I add some in the pan because you want even cooking. How was everybody's new year? Good. Great. Well, it got to be great because we all above ground and not below. Yeah. Because it's a lot that did not make it. And I just found out we lost um, Duranese Pace. Who? Woman. No, Duranese Pace of the Pace Sisters. Oh, okay. I don't know if y'all know. Um, a while back, yeah. Tyler Perry had helped her out a little bit, and she was on, I think, I think it was a Steve Harvey show, or, yeah. oh. but her and them sisters, they got some voices. The mom passed two last year, and then Duranice just passed on last Thursday, I believe it was. But everybody pretty much know my father is a preacher, so I'm pretty hip to all the gospel music. Does anybody not like coconut? I that's this Peggy, not particularly. But I know you'll eat mine because you eat everything I make. <laughs> <laughs> you mine know what? And, 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 that's, <laughs> and that's the truth. I will, Destiny. What did you say, Juliet? 
I said, my, give it to Mikey. She'll eat it. She'll eat it. <laughs> I, I, if everybody I doesn't know freaking frack, that's Miss Peggy and Miss Juliet. <laughs> that was my other mamas too. All right now. So we got our coconut shrimp nicely <laughs> coated. And we're going to go ahead and start the frying. Chef Destiny, I'm allergic to coconut, but I'll try that though. <laughs> oh, well, now, now I don't want to send nobody to the ER now. But, but I appreciate it. <laughs> now, if your grease is not hot enough, you can turn it up. I love this little electric um, fryer pan. Easy cleanup after the grease is cooled off. I just transport the grease into something else. Make sure I got all those shrimp out of there. Destiny, can you ask why that? Yes, I was gonna get into that next. Thank you, darling. All right. Um, you can air fry these. And the big difference is um, frying it and grease the calories are gonna be 640 calories a serving. If you air fry it, you'll only get 250 calories. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have an air fryer, but you know, any of my lovely mothers, or aunties and uncles on here, if y'all want to pick one up for a sister, that's fine. Or ask Food and County to give me a larger budget so I can get some more stuff I need. Uh, that would be great. So while those are cooking, I'm going to get some of this stuff out the way. And we're going to start on our broccoli slaw. And I have my trash can right here for an easy cleanup. All right, so for the broccoli slaw, for the dressing, you'll need mayo. And I like Miracle Whip. I know yeah. everybody don't but use what kind you want. Uh-oh, we popping over here. And you're gonna cook them for four to seven minutes on each side. I have a pan over here that I'm gonna put them in that I have my paper towels in. Another little trick to catch grease is you can use um, paper bag, rip it up, and that'll soak up the grease. I did a brunch um, over the weekend. I had to do a whole bunch of fried green tomatoes and that paper bag helped me out a lot. So you'll need mayo, you'll need agave or some honey, and some lemon juice. All right, now the broccoli slaw that I got, it already come prepared. You don't even got to chop it up or nothing. I got this at the Walmart, and it is organic. And I know my sister Kim would love to see that. We're getting brown over here, so I'm gonna flip over our coconut shrimp. Mm -hmm. Can y'all see that coconut shrimp brown back there? Yes. And it smells so wonderful. All right. Can y'all say a little prayer for Kim? Because she was a little sick this morning, had to cancel her classes. I said a little prayer with her. And I'm gonna check on her when I get done. All right, so I'm going to do the dressing first because that's going to be easier to mix around first and then add our broccoli slaw. So I'm going to add about you need to stay um, a cup of mayo. One cup of mayo. A tablespoon of the agave. And I'm going to squeeze about a, two tablespoons of lemon juice. Make sure you don't get the seeds in there. And I did microwave these. You're not going to mute it, so I'm going to bring my class in here. I am. I'll mute it. All right. So stay in there. Bring your hands up. Our shrimp is almost done. We're going to get this a good mix around. Y'all have to bear with me because you know I'm not at the center, so I don't have everything I need. I tried to grab what I could. We're going to ask everybody to mute themselves because we are recording the class. 
So if you don't mind muting yourselves. And we you have want this to look very good because they're going to be uploaded on YouTube if you didn't know already. I wish y'all could smell this. It smells divine. So this is what your dressing should look like. So I'm going to begin to add the broccoli flaw. And I'm only going to add enough that's big enough for this container. And believe it or not, that little bit of dressing, it will soak up really well in our slaw. And in the meantime, y'all see our shrimp is done. So I'm going to take it out of here and drain it. Y'all can see that beautiful golden shrimp. So there you have it, our golden shrimp right there. I'm gonna plate that up really nice for y'all when I get done. So we're gonna mix our slaw with our dressing. And this is very healthy, all broccoli, carrots, cabbage, And coleslaw, I like coleslaw when I make it from scratch. I like to let it sit in the refrigerator about 30 minutes after I make it. So all that cabbage or broccoli can soak up that dressing really good. So the extra ingredient we're adding to this to make it the cranberry crunch. At your local Walmart, I found these which was perfect, is dried cranberry and honey almonds. We're going to add that to our slaw. And who don't like crazies? Was that you, Miss Tara? It's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there we have it. A nice, healthy broccoli slaw. And this is only 133 calories per serving. It's pretty. Which is good. Mm -hmm. We're going to plate that up. But first, we need to make our sauce for our coconut shrimp. Now, I got some sweet chili sauce. I'm going to use about maybe two tablespoons of that. This already got chili peppers in it, so you don't have to add any more heat if you don't want. If y'all, all everybody know Mama Hall from the job, you know, she works in the kitchen with us with volunteers. I love her to death. I've been begging her since last year for some pear preserves, and she finally made me some. So we're going to add that to our sweet chili sauce. Now, um, this is the only kind of difference I did because Outback uses um, marmalade, but I don't particularly care for marmalade, but I love this pear preserve. You're just going to get out a little mix. If you want to add more heat to it, you can add some more crushed red pepper or cayenne pepper. Now I'm gonna plate this up for you and then we're gonna get into our dessert. So all I did was, I don't know, I gotta clean this up. So I just laid a bed of coconut down here. I got my sauce. I'm going to put some slaw in this pretty little glass. And 
And you don't have to be this bougie with yours, but you know, for 2021, we're turning it up. Now I'm gonna lay our coconut. And if you follow me on Facebook too, I do add my pictures every day of what I make. We're just gonna lay that. Get six of them. And this is a healthy meal right here. Like I said, you can air fry it as well to lessen those calories. I'm just going to add a little bit more of the almonds and cranberries on top. Just for that look. That's a five star meal, Chef Moss. That looks amazing. Thank you, darling. So here is our meal, everybody. Our Outback Coconut Shrimp Copycat with our Pear Preserve Sweet Thai Chili Sauce and our healthy Crunchy Cranberry Broccoli Slaw. Mm. Anybody hungry yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't hear no lot of excitement. Yes. It sounds a little yeah. good enough yes. for you. Yes. Okay, it's now. Good. Now, I'll eat that. All right, so last but not least, our dessert. And this is a really easy dessert. I love Almond Joys, another coconut. I love almonds. So what you're going to need for this recipe we got some more coconut. I'm going to do about a cup and a half. of coconut, close to two cups. This depends on how many you want to make. Your next ingredient is sweetened condensed milk. We're going to add the whole can. Hold on, y'all. Uh -oh. Everybody still with me? Yes, yes, yes. We're still All right. After that, I went and chopped up in my nice little, my little mini chopper, I love it. I chopped up some fresh almonds. We're gonna add that right on in there. How many almonds? Um, I just picked up one of those $2 bags at the gas station. You know them little nut stands they be yeah. having with cashews and all that. I picked up one little two two dollar pack. And what you're gonna do is mix all this together. And yeah, we're a little over on class, but you know we get a whole hour, and I wanted today to be really special since y'all been we've been away from each other. So what you want to do is make sure that coconut soaks up all of that sweet condensed milk. And that's what you should have. Everybody can see that? Yes. It's nice and pliable. I'm going to change gloves because we will be making, like I said, not balls. I mean, bars. We're going to make truffles, which will be in the shape of balls. Now, what you can do to your gloves is spray them with a little cooking spray or dab it with a little bit of uh, cooking oil. So the last ingredient you will need is some melting chocolate. Now, I think the easiest for y'all, if you don't know how to do a double boiler of that nature, I found these baking melton wafers and you can microwave it right in this container for two minutes, but after a minute, you need to stir it up because that chocolate will burn on you. I'm also gonna be decorating with some coconut pecan icing. You buy that at your local store what you use on German chocolate cake. German chocolate is my favorite cake. 
So you would take your coconut almond mixture. Now the size that you want is up to you. If you want to make bars, all you would do is grease you a pan, put some parchment paper in there, pat this whole thing down in there and freeze it. Mm. And then you take it out and cut it into desired bars you want. So that's mm. about the size ball I'm doing. After you get all of those balls made, you're going to stick them in your freezer about 30 minutes. Mm. And when you're done, they should be looking like this. So I dipped some of them in that chocolate. I added mm -hmm. a little almond to the top. <laughs> Gonna use our cute little muffin cups. I saved some of the almonds whole so I could decorate them after, you know. So here are the ones that I dipped into the, the coconut pecan icing. And that is a quick little semi-healthy treat because you can use dark chocolate as well. So our finished products for today, you had Aja's Copycat Alfredo. And here is our Copycat Almond Joy Truffle. Mm, mm, mm. Everybody can see that. Have? Wow, can I have one? Sure, we jumped through right the here. screen. <laughs> now these are 411 calories. So I would probably only do one or half of one. If you you gangster, you you can eat you a whole, you know. As long as you working out, you good. So there we have it. Let me just get some stuff out of the way. So once you freeze them 30 minutes, you let them unthaw? No, 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 no. You don't want oh. them to unthaw. After you freeze them, you need to have your chocolate already melted and ready. So when okay. they come out, you can go ahead and dip them. Place your nut on top, stick them in the refrigerator to chill for a little bit. They're okay, not going to be so hard that you can't you bite them. You see, I've had these in yeah. for 30 minutes and they're just nice and firm. Y'all okay. know last year, also another chocolate trick is that um, shell chocolate they have in the jar, in the bottle for ice cream. You know, you pour it on your ice cream and it gets hard real quick. We did use some of that last year. So once again, Here you have it for today, our copycat like almond joy bars, truffles, and our healthy crunchy berry broccoli slaw with our pear preserve Thai chili sauce and our golden coconut shrimp. Mm. I really hope you guys enjoyed the class today. It has been a blast. I'm so excited to be sharing all these new ideas with you guys. Does anybody have any questions? And you know, if you want the recipes exactly, you can email me and everyone should have my email address. Spell oh. the Panish um, response we're to give. Oh, for the, it is uh, me siento bien cocinera, M-E, Mm -hmm. And the next word is Ciento, S-I-N-T-O. The next word is B-N, B-I-E-N. And Cocinera is C-O-C-I-N-E-R-A. And that is the female version of the Spanish word chef. The male version, you just put an O on the N instead of the A. Mm -hmm. And that is it. Everybody enjoyed class today. Mm -hmm. Yes, we missed you yes. guys. We love you. We will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Um, let me not get mixed up. Yeah, 11 a.m. Today is Tuesday. But we will see you tomorrow and Wednesday, 11 o'clock, bright early. We love you. Stay blessed. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.
Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.